go from there. Sounds good. So, okay. Now in partnership with Westport Library's Verso Studios and Quick Center for the Arts, uh, it's Oh Brother, Not Another Podcast. Uh, and if you like the show, please leave a review. And I'm Trace Burroughs. And I'm Migs Burroughs, uh, which is why this it's called Oh Brother. Uh, and my, our guest <laughs> is Pam Barkington from Westport, where we emanate from and a uh, longtime friend and uh, has a very has a fascinating career. And um, we had a fascinating kind of uh, meeting in London and yeah. we'll talk about briefly, but um, unexpected. And anyway, so uh, now Pam's a very accomplished photographer and uh, as was her father and she was a fashion model, as was her mother. And so uh, just to set things up briefly about your career, you know, we'll get to what you're doing today. And but what was that like having such accomplished parents that, that you that's, you know, would be enough to scare me away from doing what they were doing. But uh, actually, I was thinking about this morning and, you know, realized for the first time that it made it so easy for me to do what I did, because. I had this like nest of home base where it was the family business and it was very familiar to me and I could go on bookings that were stressful, but then I could go over to my dad's studio and hang out. And, you know, it was, it was made it very, very probably easier for me than mm. other models um, in the business. You know, I always hear things about models having such a hard time and, you know, getting hassled or abused. And I never had any of that happen. And um, I realized that's probably why it was um, very comfortable for me to do. Um, but would you like to hear how I got into it? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Now it's, 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 yeah. It's, it's, an inter it's an interesting story. So I was, um, my big dream was to act. And, you know, from the time I was a child, I loved acting and I loved makeup. And I used to get my mother's makeup box and it, when I was little and put on different makeups and then show it to the family and dance around and you know, act like an idiot. Um, but that was, my, you know, makeup was my favorite thing. So I was an, an apprentice, as I know you both worked in summer theater. I was uh, an apprentice in Peterborough, New Hampshire, and after my junior year and uh, the the actor who taught us, taught the apprentices, Mordecai Lawner, also taught at the Neighborhood Playhouse in New York. And he said, why don't you, you know, not do your senior year and come to the Neighborhood Playhouse? So I decided to do that. But then as it turned out, Neighborhood Playhouse wanted me to finish my senior year. So I moved to New York with my mother, who was moving anyway. Um, and I finished my senior year at an all girls public school called Julia Richmond. That was so cool. <laughs> was? Well, it, well, because it was right near Harlem. Oh. So there were all these girl gangs and things. I mean, it was right out of, a, I mean, there were like people that were not in gangs like me. <laughs> it, there were even a couple of people from Westport that I reconnected with. But there were girl gangs with, you know, that, that would th threaten each other and have like fights in the streets. So for me, it was all this like incredible fodder for my acting, you know. And uh, oh, yeah. so and I studied acting at night with Morty because, um, you know, as I said, I couldn't I couldn't go to the neighborhood. But, but I was going there in the fall. But I wanted to just kind of make a little money um, over the summer to get out actually from from under my dad. Who, um, oh, this is, uh, I won't tell too much of this, but I was living alone at 16 in an apartment mm. on 79th Street. I was supposed to be living with Perry, my sister, but she was always commuting back to Westport to be with her boyfriend. She was going <laughs> to Hunter College. So, uh, and, and dad was paying her to look out for me because I was such a, a problem child. <laughs> He was giving her $20 a week and she would split it with me. So, and go back to Westport. She was living with Michael Katz. You remember Michael? Oh, sure, yeah. And then they, they got married and they had three beautiful children and so forth and so on. Anyway, so um, I wanted to make money for the summer and um, I thought I might be able to do some commercials that would feed in. So um, I went to see 
Richard Avedon, who was a friend of the family. Oh. And he, I mean, this is where the story just gets so wonderful. He was just wonderful to me. And he sent me right away to Harper's Bazaar. Mm. But on the, in the elevator going down, I met a Japanese photographer who shared the studio with Avedon. And he kind of, it was really, I mean, for me, I, this was like after school, by the way, I was like, had a little manila envelope with a few pictures. So I, I ran into the, the, this photographer, Hiro, who's a very, very, yeah. very fantastic. And he, he literally like circled me and he, he was small. So he looked, he looked up at me and I thought, oh my God, but I knew who he was and I loved his photos so as it turned out, he, he booked me all the time. So it was that chance meeting that got me into a different, um, I, I did a lot of work for my dad, which was Mademoiselle and, you know, the younger things. But I also did the high fashion, the diamond eye patch picture was that first summer. I was 17 in that picture. So, um, you know, it just opened a whole world of real drama fun for me. And I was, I was acting all summer in these marvelous pictures that Hero mm-hmm. was doing um, of me, you know, in a diamond eye patch and all, you know, and that black light one also was Hero. So um, then I decided I'd put off going to school for another year, <clears throat> the neighborhood playoffs, and then another year and another year. And that's how it kind of just evolved. That's my story of how I got started. Yeah. yeah. So did you like to, uh, now that you're doing photography, did you learn a lot from your dad, like watching him or from the guys who shot you? I learned so much from all, all of them. Yeah. My, my father was wonderful though. He, you know, he really supported me and he gave me great tips. He had this big oak table in his studio that people would sit around and, and just hang out. He was a very, great storyteller so people love to sit around the table with him and um, he would sit there with me and give me incredible tips about photography very simple but very you know the idea of separation between background and foreground and you know the idea of focus where you're going to put your focus that was uh, one that has really done me well and another one was just to eliminate anything that's not important. Mm. So I'm, I'm always like cropping a certain way or, you know, now Photoshopping. Um, but those two tips were just absolutely fantastic. Um, he, was, he, he, was, he was wonderful. Did, in those days, I don't know what it was like, you know, no, were there Harvey Weinstein types that he warned you against? Like never work for, I won't let you work for the this guy or you should no. in guy. fact dad, daddy didn't want me to model particularly i think you know i was really a bit of a jerk to tell <laughs> in which way? I, I think oh. he thought i would embarrass him you know oh. terribly because you know i was just like very rebellious very angry a lot you know but it all worked it all worked out okay i behaved myself um but he you know once i was doing it and he and and once hero started using me and it was like a whole other you know, being accepted by someone that I didn't know that he didn't know, you know, just someone who was a real artist. I think that made a very big deal. Um, and as for the, um, you know, perverts, there was one guy that all the models knew. You didn't go to, what was his name? I forget his name. But everybody knew, you You know, if you were booked by, oh, Phil Pegler, if you got booked by this guy, just watch it because he was gonna, <laughs> you know, he was gonna try and fondle you or whatever. But it was, you know, he was never like reported or anything. Uh, yeah. uh, and I never, I really never had any problems. And I think maybe that I never worked for Phil Peck. What I think I did <laughs> once, but um, I, I, w- I really was very lucky. I was never pressured into anything or, you know, mistreated in any way. So. Yeah, I had it good, I think. A lot of models move into acting. You started acting, then you became a model. You ever thought of going back? Or did anyone ever approach you and say, you know, it's a close connection, you know? No. No. No, The thing is, I couldn't have really done it because I didn't really have that kind of confidence. In Mm. the end, you know, it was, I I did go on auditions finally. I started acting while I was, uh, started studying while I was uh, modeling. And, 
when I went on auditions, I just found it really, really, really painful. I, I didn't have the confidence and, you know, and that actually is where it got kind of weird um, at, you know, Harvey Weinstein wise. Um, it was the early seventies when, do you remember hair and mm. O'Calcutta? Yeah, yeah. O'Calcutta. And nudity and like letting it all hang out was the big thing, right? Mm. I mean, in the acting class, people were even doing like nude. Really? Nude or yeah, semi-nude. So I went up on auditions. I mean, I can't blame it all on this because really it terrified me. But on a couple of auditions, people got so weird about wanting to take me to, me to take off my clothes, you know. Um, there was even one French director that I thought would be way beyond that. Like, I said I wouldn't take off my clothes. So he said, well, will you just show me your leg? <laughs> you just like lift your skirt a little bit, you know. And uh, anyway, I just got weirded out by that. But also I was totally weirded out because it terror just mm. terrified me. I, you know, absolute cold feet. So I, um, I, that's when I started photography, uh, 1972. Um, I decided I, I, I really couldn't do the acting thing, but I did study for years. Yeah, you need a super. Oh, and I was very good, by the way. Sure. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I can attest. I, <laughs> I can attest to that because when I we we're by chance sitting across from each other on a double decker bus in London, you acted like you uh, remembered me. <laughs> that was very. Yeah. That was very good acting. Oh, really? <laughs> No, thanks. I, I totally, know. totally did. <laughs> I remember, I remembered you more as like a little kid, you know, because I hadn't seen you in so long. And um, I, I always remember you as a little kid, you know, yeah. even now. Yeah, well, well, I must have been 19. I don't know, whatever does you know, say. Hope, but yeah, it was it's the weirdest thing because you were just sitting across from me and of course, Isn't I that so weird? I know. I remember I have such a sharp picture in my mind about that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And of course, you know, what's racing through my mind is, you know, do I just ask her out? Do I say, I don't know what happened. We just said, oh, you could have. That would have been fun. Yeah, yeah I don't know. <laughs> you know, because I, I remember Saga Tuck's Elementary and, you know, all of that. Yeah, too. Yeah. I know, Trace. I know. And I don't think we ever knew each other, Trace, in those days, because you were probably a littler kid, right? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I went to that whole Saga Tuck, Bedford, Staples. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. And that's why I moved back to Westport uh, to put my kids through that same school system. Yeah. You have twins, right? And how I do. I have twins. They're 20, 28. Uh, well, they'll be 29 tomorrow, uh, next month, August 5th. And, um, you know, I always brag because I had them so late. I was 49 just before my 49th birthday when I had them. And uh, anyway, I bragged because this is a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I remember visiting you once and they, and they were young, they were 10 or 12, I don't know, it was a long time ago. Yeah, they were 10 yeah. Or 12 running around and it was like a handful. Yeah, uh, but... oh, they're great. I'm just, it's the, I, I mean, I actually start to weep when I think about them because I love them so much. Mm. And, um, you know, for me, that it's the best part of my life. Are they in, are they following in any of your professions? Or? Both of them are very, very good photographers and both of them are very good at art, which is really interesting. But, you know, part of that is the staples and the type of courses they could take there. Um, they probably got more training than I did really, but um, they, they're both like wilderness people. They both go out into the wilderness and oh. do different stuff. Yeah. Oh, like serious, like backpacking and just. Well, Katie, yes, Katie, Katie actually leads groups into the wilderness. Um, and Jackson is a incredible snowboarder in the Pacific Northwest. He's, he's sponsored by Burton Northwest and mm -hmm. he's, um, he's a backcountry guy. So he does, you know, some pretty scary stuff for his mama. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it is what it is, unfortunately. And Katie, Katie teaches wildlife, um, uh, wilderness first aid now in North Carolina. Mm. So as a survival uh, skills, things like yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, she's, you know, certified EMT and wilderness survival and all of that. Yeah. Wilderness 
first response. Not, it's probably different. You know, if she saw this, she'd probably get mad at me for calling it survival. Yeah. I don't, not mad, but she yeah, yeah, right. Correct me strongly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're very. My son, same thing. I can't. I start to explain what he does, and he goes, "No, don't, don't, don't even." It's not try. what I do. Yes, <laughs> I know. That's what my kids do too. Yeah, but my son has a window washing and exterior cleaning business in Bellingham, Washington. That's been first in Bellingham for two years. Wow, he's got like lots of vehicles and lots of employees, and it's like big time. So, but it, it's really all there just to support support his sports. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so. so if you you must have photographed your own kids, do they let? Are they? I mean, either just. I mean, are yes. you capable of just taking a snapshot and not like you know yeah. setups and. Well, you know, the, I think um, the iPhone has made that so easy. Yeah. You know, you see something. You know, sometimes I say, don't move, click, you know, just because the light or, you know, the way they look or, or anybody mm. like Dalma, I'm always doing that to Dalma at um, our friend Dalma at oh, yeah. lunch and everything. Don't move. Don't move. <laughs> <laughs> take a picture. Of her. <laughs> I love the iPhone. I wish I wish that it had always been like this with photography. It's just so easy. Just whip it out. And, you know, oh, equipment and all oh, that stuff. It's but- great. Yeah. Now, if you don't mind, name some of the you've, you've, you've photographed some fairly well-known people, and so after you name drop a few names on purpose, what I'm just curious how you know how you I don't know if you have to overcome it or or desensitize to you know oh, well, I'm standing in front of whoever Tony Bennett mm-hmm. or something. What you yeah. know? How do I yeah. not shake and you know? Um. You know, it's really funny because I'm okay with photographing celebrities. But if I ever meet them, I just like freeze. <laughs> no idea what to say. Um, I think my favorite photos that I've done, and I'll send you some, are my pictures of Angelica Houston. Oh. Um, but it, in that case, it was easy because we had known each other. We'd modeled together. So it was like friend stuff, and it was just went so well. And I think the pictures are so beautiful. Yeah. Um, and uh, another favorite is Perry King, the actor. I, I really, these are the, my favorite photos that came out. Bizarre. But it, 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 this was an interesting assignment because Mademoiselle magazine really started me out in photography in 1972. And one of my early assignments after I moved to California was to photograph young male actors without shirts. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. So I said, okay, no problem. <laughs> so I photographed um I, I photographed Perry King. That's the picture that really worked out well. And um I was supposed to be photographing um Bo Bridges, but he didn't want to take his shirt off. So mm. I just did a regular portrait of him. And Nick Nolte, who was you know, really important at that time, I guess, because it was right after maybe rich man, poor man. Oh, yeah. He didn't want to take his shirt off, so but I did a nice portrait of him. Um, so those are some of my favorite. I'll actually send, send you some of those pictures so you can see. Um, and then um, who else? Hmm. Those are my favorites, really. But Mademoiselle assigned me quite a few uh, because I was living in California. I left for California in 1974 uh, and I lived there, you know, till 95. So I did, oh, I was West Coast editor for um, GQ for a year. Um, and um, so do you ever encounter, you know, these people that are used to, you know, their celebrities or whatever, and they're trying to tell you what to do or how, how does it work? How do you, oh, yeah, how do yes. you get the, you know, only photograph me this way. I want to be yeah. sitting in that chair. Yeah. And you go, it's, you know, you know, well, that makes sense to, to be, you know, to make them feel comfortable. You know, I remember when you were going to photograph Paul Newman, remember? Yeah. And, and they knew exactly what, you know, what would work. So, and it did, right. Yeah. yeah but they did it and so graciously. They, they, they didn't say do it over here. They go, what do you right. think? Can we try one over here? Would you like to try one? I mean, they turned it around. So it made yes. me think like I'm a, oh, doing nice. it. They, it they so had the whole nice. thing in their head. Yeah. You know, I've, I've found pretty much that celebrities are like that. You know, they're, they're not, 
you know, I really haven't run into anybody that was, I mean, there was one girl when I was working at GQ and we did a, a bathing suit thing. Um, she trashed all the bathing suits in the, in the dressing room. Oh, and I, I would love to remember her name and say it, yeah, please. but I won't because I'll <laughs> probably make a mistake and it'll sound like it was somebody else, but she, she deliberately trashed the bathing suits and you ripped them and stuff. You mean ripped them? Yeah. What? No, just she put them on the floor and walked on them. Oh, God. And I don't, you know, I think maybe she was trying to ensure that she would get them because they were so wrecked or something. But, you know, that's really the only ce celebrity. Um, I was an editor on that. I wasn't the uh, photographer. Um, you know, by and large, they're so nice. It's their agents and their PR people that can be so obnoxious, you know, you know, and give you a really hard time. Um, but by and large, I, you know, the nicest celebrity, well, I won't say that the nicest, but I remember a very cooperative session with Ted Danson. Mm -hmm. This is also when I was working at GQ, it was a different photographer, but, you know, he didn't come with any like crew. He came on his own. It was a night shoot. You know, he's kind of said, whatever you want, you know, he wanted him to put on a sweater, fine. Huh. You know, he, he was just adorable. And I was so impressed. Um, his wife had just had a baby. And, you know, I just always remember him as being so easy and, um, and wonderful. So. And, and so put, putting normal people, well, you, I had the privilege of being photographed by you for the Birdhouse book, I think, a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, I uh, love those pictures. So I don't know. I wasn't identifying what you did or what your technique was. I just felt comfortable. I mean, I sort of I, mean, I knew you, but I'd never been photographed by you. And I don't like being photographed in general. I mean, I don't mind candid shots. I prefer that. You know, I'm not aware yeah. of it. But so do you have a is there a technique or is it just I don't know. What, what Did your father? I have, a, I have a, no, I have a strong suspicion it has something to do with like, I don't look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> No. You try to get like, <laughs> like what was it? Uh, Annie Leibovitz or Avedon? Even they were trying to get the essence. Oh like, yeah, the super like like John Lennon's in a bathtub or, or some kind of weird thing. Yeah. They're not even in a bathtub, but they're just trying to get that sort of look that they feel. Is 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 that what you try to do sometimes, or is that not just? Not I do. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, as like with Migs, I mean, we can talk about that. Is um, I shot one thing. And I didn't feel it worked. And, and we went back and did another session, remember? Yeah. Because I just didn't feel like it, it captured what we were trying to say in the photo. Um, and then, you know, what we did finally was to hold the transparent birdhouse in front of his face. And you could see his face behind it. And that, to me, just, you know, it was just conceptually much better. Um, uh yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of, it's like, an, an, there isn't always a great prop like that or a purpose mm. with the person, but, you know, I, I try to just, I try to feel the person, you know, it's like, <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> I try to like, uh, I just, you know, try to really feel who they are and um, also sense their mood. I think because I'm modeled, um, <clears throat> I know what, what's uncomfortable in oh. front of the, bit about being in front, in front of the camera. And I can and I can feel it, you know, when somebody's uncomfortable. So, yeah. what, what photographers are, do you inspire you now, or you like? Um, you know, that's that's a, an interesting question because <laughs> I don't really, uh, in terms of what's happening now in fashion photography, um, I don't really, I'm, I don't really find it that interesting. Um, there are a couple of photographers that I like, um, but um, yeah. yeah. Well, there's, and there's so many, everybody with an iPhone is a photographer. So, I mean, yes. yeah, not, not with a capital P, but yeah, you know. I mean, honestly, I'm not that, um, I'm not that, and I don't think I ever was that dedicated um, to photography. I, you know, I'm, I'm just not that really interested anymore. Mary Ellen Hendricks is my favorite photographer. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, that's nice. Yeah. No, I mean, I, you know, yeah, I could think about it and come up with some. So, what do you have projects? I mean, what you say you're not that, I mean, are you actively? I am, 
I'm not actively shooting except for portraits here in Westport. Um, but I, I have my dad's archives and I have my archives. And a lot of what dad did is interesting, you know, in terms of photographing celebrities and, you know, his fashion too, but mostly like as a mid-century photographer and especially pertaining to Westport because, you know, he documented everything. I've got like mm. square dances at Saugatuck that oh you both can remember. Can you still remember those? Remember the square dances at yeah, Saugatuck? I taking the square dancing lessons in gym class. And, uh, yeah. Hated that. Hated that. Oh my yeah. God. But, but, yeah. But the square dances, you know, the actual square dances yeah. and stuff. So I've got pictures of that. I've got pictures of cocktail parties, got pictures of Easter parties and all of this really great mid-century Westport stuff. And so I'm, you know, I'm working on trying to organize it so that I can put together a book or whatever, you know, run it up the plot flagpole yeah. and see who <laughs> salutes kind of thing. <laughs> Would it so be a that, memoir? Would you include like your own, you know, memoirs from Westport? Yeah, I'm also it? trying, I am trying again, you know, I, I'm not a very confident person, but I'm trying to work up my confidence confidence to start a blog um, because I keep uh, people on, you know, on Facebook and stuff, keep saying book, book, you know, when I post these pictures. So, um, you know, I'm slowly starting to think, well, maybe there's, maybe there's something interesting there, but you know, I'm trying to work up my courage to do that, which would be kind of my memoir. Mm. Also, you know, I'm getting old and I just feel like um, <laughs> I want to leave something for my kids that they can remember. You yeah. know, yeah. That's, that's what I do. When I die, I should just come in and throw everything in the garbage. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, the things we treasure. <laughs> I, I, that's what they'll do. You know. <laughs> I have like decades of shit. Yeah, well, we had to do that with our parents' house. <laughs> we knew that you know they treasured these little things, and it's oh, like no. nobody wants them. Nobody no. has room for them. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. It's so hard. We had to do that with parents. You know, like three parents. You know, father mother and stepfather as they died yeah. and uh it was excruciating to do that so i'm trying to actually do that in the house now too you know look at it look at stuff as though i've already as though i've already dead yeah well they say that yeah the greatest <laughs> gift you, wants the, the greatest gift you can give your kids is to throw throw everything away before you die i know i, know. <laughs> I think as they I will that they have to keep it and yeah. like archive it <laughs> Um, like the, the, cur the, the curse, the curse. If you want the, whatever money I have left at that time, you, better, you pay yeah. for a storage shed for the next. I want to live forever somewhere. Right. My curse on my kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. You know, I've got so many collections and things. So yeah, I'm trying to work on that. But I also would like to leave them a record. You know, there. I doubt if I, they're going to take out a video camera and. You know, asked me to tell stories, so it's good to do interviews and record yeah. and stuff. And yeah, but um, it is what it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're almost out of time. If you have any other, we didn't really get to too many Westport memories, but um, oh, that's too bad. Who did you yeah. go to school with? Who who were you? Were you in touch with? Were you in that Michael Douglas's class? Yes. Yes. Were you? Oh. Well, we were actually very good friends because right. our mothers had been roommates. Oh. In, at when they were going to the America, uh, American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Oh. So we kind of connected early on at Bedford when he first moved here. And we were very good friends. We even had a birthday to party together because our birthdays were a couple of days apart. Mm. And later we dated um, when he got out of school, Santa Barbara. Um, I was already modeling and um, we had actually stayed in touch for, because of birthdays. So I think on our 21st birthday, we, his dad got him tickets to Funny Girl. Barbara Streisand was in that. And so when he got out, I guess we were about 23. We started dating for about a year. Um, and then um, we've stayed in touch. I spoke to him recently. He's oh. good. Yeah, it's good. Well, I have a, my Michael Douglas story is I, I, my parents signed me up for tennis lessons for some reason. I don't know. Get me out of the house. And it was Doc Marshall had a thing. Yeah, Doc Marshall. Is. Yeah. So they paired me up. I'm 10 years old and and they pair me up with this kid named Michael Douglas. So I had no idea who he was, but he kept flinging himself over the net 
and rolling around. And he says, I want to be a stunt man when I grow up. <laughs> and, and, that, and so everything to him was a pratfall and <laughs> falling backwards and tumbling over the net, you know, kicking That's up the great. dust. And then I went, when I went home and my parents asked me, I said, well, I'm, I'm paired up with this kid, Michael Douglas. And he could, they went, oh my God, his father's a famous actor. <laughs> and I go, well, this kid's not, I mean, he just keeps throwing himself on the ground and flipping <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> that's so great <laughs> so that was the extent of, i don't know how many times we played tennis but what was yeah you know, that oh that's so priceless what a wonderful story <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's you know he's i i tell him also he's like truly one of the good guys you know mm-hmm. he is just such a good guy he, he means to do so much good in this world so yeah yeah and the movies he's chosen you know to produce or be in are, are definitely are important movies. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. not slack. He's, he's a really, really good guy. Yeah. So any last uh, thoughts or, or previews of things to come or anything? I wrote down a couple of things. Oh, okay. I wanted, of course, I didn't refer to it at all. Um, oh, um, no, no, I won't talk about that. Oh, Park Cummings. That's, you know, Westport. Mem- if you ever want to do another um, mm. podcast on Westport Memories, I wrote that Julian Frank helped me oh. do my algebra homework was he Park the guy that, Cummings, that yeah he was the guy who bombed he was, a, he was the bomb he's the guy that blew up yeah oh. yeah because i you know i wrote i made some notes after i listened to your memories yeah. um park cummings tennis court would be a wonderful thing to talk about oh, yeah esther and sydney kramer sure talk about them enid monroe these were all really best friends of the family oh and I was a golden girl for JFK. We rode around on the back of a truck and, 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 you know, campaigned for, for, for Kennedy. You did? I did. Me and Perry and a couple of other girls. Um, And he was there? No, he wasn't there. No, it's just, you know, it was just like a Westport. These are just Westport experiences. It was a rumor that Enid Monroe dated JFK. Oh, I never heard that. And I haven't, I've asked a lot of people that know her and nobody's, they don't confirm or deny. But. I never heard that. No. And she was really mom's best friend. I I think I would have. Oh yeah. you would have. I, but yeah, it's possible. Yeah. It's quite possible. Um, Enid was fabulous. Oh, Suki Nagel's slumber party. <laughs> Suki Nagel. I remember that. Nagel, did I you was there. Oh, really? I was famous. It even got in the papers. It was so wild and crazy. Wow. It was junior she high. Brother Chuck Nagel? Yeah, she's Chucky Nagel's big so sister. Chuck, Chuck was, I guess, in my grade or something. Yeah, Chucky, little Chucky. Little um, Chucky. I never got in Anyway, at this party, uh, it, it, her parents were away. We, you know, it's famous, Suki Nagel's summer party. It mm. got so crazy and we all got so drunk at that the boys were outside throwing eggs and ashtrays at the neighbors. <laughs> it all seems so quaint now, you know, I mean, I mean, uh, now kids are doing weirder things, but well, thank you. Yeah, Pam, we should, maybe we should do a separate Westport reminiscent thing because you've got fun. great yeah. memories. I'd, I'd be up for that. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you so much. I yeah, love talking I'd, to you both. Yeah. yeah thanks. Yep. Thanks a lot. All right. Okay. Bye. 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 Peace. Peace be with you. <laughs> <laughs>